Hello everyone, Avanti here. Today is going to be one of my astronomy nights where we'll photograph celestial objects. So the object I'm going to photograph today is the Lagoon Nebula, also known as Messier 8. So the Lagoon Nebula can be found in the constellation of Sagittarius. Now this is a very interesting constellation because it resembles the zodiac constellation Sagittarius which is a zodiac constellation by the way um, and it is the zodiac constellation of the month November because during that month the constellation will be at towards east after sunset but right now in the month of June uh, the Milky Way score is rising and the Sagittarius constellation is also rising and this constellation is by the way is very very close to the Milky Way score Basically, it points to the center of our Milky Way, which is pretty interesting. And this nebula is actually one of the brightest nebula in the sky after the Orion Nebula. So the Orion Nebula can be seen with the naked eye from relatively light polluted skies, but the Lagoon Nebula is visible to the naked eye from relatively dark skies. So this nebula is pretty interesting. And that is why I chose this nebula as my summer target. Now to take the, a picture of this nebula, I'll be using my, my good old 650mm uh, reflector telescope that has an aperture of 130 uh, and my good old ZWO ASI 224MC uh, color camera which I mostly use for capturing the moon and planets. So the framing uh, as per Stellarium that I'm getting for with the setup is actually pretty good uh, because this nebula or or basically in most deep sky objects that in the context by the way are really big so you don't really have to worry so much about the framing but the framing that I get for the lagoon nebula is slightly deeper than what sh what should be the ideal case um, because if you wanted to get the whole nebula in one frame you would have to have use either a smaller telescope or a bigger camera uh, as this nebula is really huge in the night sky. Now, like most nebulae, uh, we can't see the, them with the naked eye, uh, but, in re but in reality, they are incredible. Basically, the Lagoon Nebula is four times larger than the full moon. Not in terms of true size, but in terms of the angular size. That is the size that we perceive right from Earth here. Uh, so if the Lagoon Nebula was as bright as the full moon, it would appear as a really big uh, big patch of cloud in the sky with the details visible. You would actually see the Lagoon Nebula if it was that bright. Uh, you wouldn't even need high magnification at all. It is just that big, but, but it is so faint in reality that we just can't see the nebula as it is, which is why we need camera to actually get the details of the nebula but if you're in dark skies you should actually be able to see the nebula it will not be as impressive as the photos but you will see something Okay, so right now I'm in my desktop and I've got all my files uh, from my session last night here. Um, so there we go, these are uh, the files. So I've got dark, dark frames. Um, so the, I've got about 70 dark frames. Um, and I also got some bias frames right here. So these are bias frames. Uh, now all these images, uh, um, the, by the way, these are my light frames. They are all taken with one second of exposure. Um, and I, I've taken about 600 images. So you can see right here, uh, let's keep scrolling. Okay, so there are a lot of images right here. So 
going to take up a lot of space, obviously, once I'm done processing, that is. Okay, so there we go. The number keeps going up till we reach 635. So 635 images of one second exposure. Pretty huge, actually. Um, so I'm going to process them. Uh, but first, I'm going to stack them with Deep Sky Stacker. So let us open Deep Sky Stacker right here. And let us quick. Okay, so let's quickly load up the files. frames here so this is going to take a while to process actually uh, because there are just too many images to work with but the reason why I chose to take uh, such short exposures is simply to avoid star trailings um, so there we go by the way this area you see right here this is actually the core I mean the, the brightest section of the lagoon there's a little nebulosity, um, even if you look at one of these images. Let us zoom in onto this. See right there? This is some nebulosity. Uh, there's obviously a slight amount of trail, but that's no problem. Um, but it is kind of interesting to see this nebulosity. So this is the brightest section of the nebula. By the way, this is also called uh, this feature was actually taken by the Hubble Space Telescope as well uh, and this is called the hourglass uh, of the nebula. There are, uh, there's a lot of dust and gas here um, and of course it is the brightest section of the nebula. The rest of the nebulosity is not visible, it's, it's much fainter but this section is bright so we have it in all our frames. So now I'm going to quickly load up all my dark frames as well and basically I'm going to stack them all up Okay guys, so I have stacked all of these images and here is my stacked image. So when you stack your image, you're not going to see much. It's going to look like a dark image. But this dark image is actually pretty revealing as well. Uh, the reason why it's like this is because a combination of all the light frames with the noise removed. So there's hardly any noise right here compared to these which are the light frames there's just a lot of noise in here um, but this dark image is pretty, quite revealing as well so I was talking about the four nebulas uh, hourglass feature uh, this one right here this is pretty interesting uh, you can the fact that you can see it is awesome um, I was amazed when I saw it. Uh, the dark dust lanes and bright star in the center and two bright lobes which is pretty awesome and by the way one thing not to miss out is a cluster of stars right here this is NG this is called NGC 6530 this is a cluster um, and this is pretty interesting as well so let us actually process this image uh, with the software Cyril uh, so Cyril is right here so this is actually a free piece of software, open source, and incredible tool. Uh, I'll probably make a tutorial on this someday. But first, let us load our image. Okay, so there we have the auto save. And I'll open this up. Okay, boom, there we go. We have our image loaded. Now let's quickly do an auto stretch to see what's there in this image. Whoa, look at that. This 
you guys is the Lagoon Nebula. You can look at the amount of detail. Um, let's try to zoom in and see what we can see. So I was talking about the hourglass feature. Look at that. Incredible, incredible. And let's not miss out the cluster of stars. But wait, there's more in the image than you think. Uh, there's nebulosity here. There's nebulosity here. And there's no nebulosity here. This is like um, a section between the nebula. How cool is that? And we also have two incredibly bright stars here, uh, which is awesome. But there's one problem in this image. The image is too bluish in color, so we'll need to do some color calibration. That is, remove excess amount of color. So the reason why this happens is because your camera uh, has four pixels uh, that are called bear matrix. So as we know, there are three fundamental colors on our red, green, and blue. And cameras generally are sensitive to green light, uh, just like how the human eye is sensitive to green light. So the image in my case got a little bit bluer uh, because of the white balance. But in reality, it's actually more greener than it should be. So after removing the color calibration, you go back we have this blue image and now we have the kind of image that we expect to but it still has a little bit of green noise so I'm going to go to image processing and remove some of the green noise here and there we go it looks kind of better uh, but there's one more problem the edges have some stacking artifacts now this is to be expected anyway because we're not having perfect tracking with the mount that I'm using. So, uh, there is some amount of drift uh, and the stars are obviously trailing slightly but it's not significant anyway. So no, no big deal at all. So I'm gonna crop them, crop the image and there we go, we got rid of the stacking artifacts. Now, since our image is auto stretched, there is obviously one more part see one side of the image is extremely bright while the other side is super dark. Uh, this is generally due to light pollution I guess. Uh, but yeah it is due to light pollution and it is inherent to cameras as well. So what we're going to do now is increase the brightness of this image by, con by increasing the auto stretch. Uh, so let's do it to histogram stretch. So we're pulling the histogram of the image. It looks really ugly, I know, but look at the amount of dirt in the image. It's One side is so dark and the other side is too bright, so we need to balance this out with the help of dynamic background extraction. So I'm gonna not going to mess with all these settings, but I'll just do what I can. Okay, that looks improved. Uh, it looks ugly, I know, but it, it is definitely improved a lot. Uh, but I think we can try it again. Whoa, there we go. Okay, so there we go. That that our, that's our image. And it look it does look ugly right now, but this is in this isn't the original image. So we need to go back to linear. This is actually this is actually the image. Now it has obviously improved a lot. So what I'm gonna do is stretch this image. Uh, that is stretch the histogram so you can see the histogram grow, goes to the right hand side as I pull the slider of the gray to the left to the left hand side so I click on apply and we get a slightly stretched image now I'm going to import this file on GIMP uh, which is GNU's image manipulation program and I'm going to stretch and add a little bit more spice to the image uh, right in GIMP Oops. So let us convert this into a 16-bit image and save the file. So I'm going to call the so I'm going to call this file Lagoon M8 TIFF. Uh, M8, by the way, stands for Messier 8. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to import this file on GIMP, basically. So let us quickly open GIMP and get in get the image. Uh, to what we wanted to. Okay, let's do it. Where's my file? 
There we go. So let us first check the resolution and scaling of the image. Uh, I think I can downscale it, the pixels a little bit just to make it a little bit sharper. Uh, there we go. So that is our image, by the way. Now what I'm going to do is go to colors and stretch the image by pulling up the levels. Uh, it is the same thing was done on Cyril, by the way. Uh, so you could do it right there, but I like to use GIMP. Uh, there we go. Now let us. Now, if you keep stretching this image uh, with the right amount of uh, histogram, you should get a, a good picture. Um, there we go. Now let us play around with the curves so I'm gonna pull down the dark curve the dark areas now this this graph represents the black points and the dark points so if we pull the black the white points up then you can see the image gets much brighter basically anything in the image that is whiter and that obviously includes the stars are gonna get brighter so we don't want that actually so what we'll do instead is pull down the black points. There we go. So as you pull the black points, but if you preserve the white points, something like this with a, with a fancy curve like this, you get a almost perfect looking image. Now there's a small problem. I think the saturation is too much. So I'm going to reduce the saturation a little bit. I think that's a bit too much. That looks better to me. Uh, I know the image is actually a bit, a bit more noisy, but I really don't care that much. Uh, I think, I think this looks perfect, no matter what, uh, because the fact that you can see the nebula is amazing. Now, there, one thing we can do to improve this image is reduce the size of the stars because they're so bloated up. In order to do so, I'll be using the select tool right here uh, so the select tool can be found right here in tools transform tools and selection tools so it comes by the name color select so you can find it right here uh, but you but if you don't you can just use this menu right here uh, so what I'm gonna do is check the threshold first so the threshold refers to then the amount of the amount of detection the amount of stars it is able to detect it, it's not necessarily tied to stars but the amount of points it is able to detect i think that is more precise okay i think this looks good now what i'm gonna do is select feathering uh, so feathering is basically selecting all the region within the image uh, and go to filters and distorts and I'm gonna go click on value propagate and then I'm going to set the mode to more black and I'm gonna click on OK now I'm going to go to select and click on none this has actually reduced the size of stars slightly um, I think this looks better so I'm going to import this image as a PNG file. So yeah, let us import this image.